Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, for who you are. You are so mighty. You are so good to us, Lord. And I thank you, Lord God, for the privilege and opportunity to share your word. And I thank you, oh God, for those who have joined us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, to learn more of you, to learn about how to stay full of you, Father. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask you to bless each and every one. Father God, under the sound of my voice, I thank you, Father God, for blessing them, to keeping them, to giving them an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say unto them. Now, Father God, I ask you, oh God, just to minister to each and every one. Oh, Father God, I thank you for healing broken heart, hearts, oh God. I thank you, Father God, for healing, oh God, bodies, oh minds, oh God. I thank you, Father God, for bringing deliverance, oh God. I thank you for setting free the captives, oh God. In the name of Jesus, according to Isaiah 61 and 1. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just praise you. I glorify your name. I thank you, Lord God, for teaching us to be thankful and glorifying your name. Help us, oh God, to keep our mind focused upon you, Lord. And Father God, remember, help us to never forget who you are. Never Help us to never forget the testimony bonus that you've given unto us and help us to never forget what you've said and done for us God and what you said to us and what you've done for us in Jesus name we praise you right now God and we glorify your name in the name of Jesus we pray amen hi this is Darla from Kano's Empowerment I do have a free report for you it is downloadable from my website it is called the seven secrets of greatness if you want to be able to find out how uh, to get from point A to point B and you need some insight to get you there, this report uh, is for you. So go to my website to download www.kenosempowerment.com now. Currently using the book Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God for this online home Bible study. It is um, written by Andrew Womack from Andrew Womack Ministries. Uh, the book is available at, from Amazon and you can use the link. Uh, just highlight it or you can just click on the link in the video description below. And if you purchase the product, I will receive an affiliate commission uh, at no extra cost to you. But all proceeds will be used for outreach to widows. In to the book, there's also the study guide that's also available. Uh, this is also available on Amazon.com. Uh, uh, there's the link if you want to um, use that to go directly to the study guide. Or you can just click, click on the link in the video description below. For those of you who like to take quizzes on your Bible study lessons, I do have a quiz available for you. Just click on the link in the video description below and it will take you directly to the quiz. If you just want to download the lesson, uh, you can go to www.kenosempowerment.com uh, now. Uh, it is available on my website. I ask uh, that you also subscribe. Uh, while you're there so that you can receive you know uh, the latest news and updates also uh, there's a link in the description below to my website So you can support uh, the ministry uh, by going to Amazon.com. I'm showing you, you know, where you can go in in the search bar. You can type in uh, Kenos Empowerment. Um, it will pull up uh, the Bible study journal. Uh, it is available for purchase. You know, the proceeds from this journal is um, is used to support widows 
and so um so i you know i do send out greeting cards you know to uh you know to widows or widow widowers i talk i send uh the uh, cards to people who are sick uh, or homebound uh, so this will really be a blessing um uh, to those when to the to that outreach um and you can find it on amazon.com hi this is darla with canos empowerment thank you so very much for joining me in this bible study in this lesson i'll be talking about discover the keys to staying full of god so if you are looking to be able to deepen your relationship with the Lord, or if you just want to find out what are some of the traps uh, that may be holding you back in God, then this Bible study is for you. Uh, I am excited about this new lesson. I know that God is definitely going to bless you. So get your pen, your pencil, your paper, and your Bibles, and come join me for this Bible study. I'm looking forward to hearing from you, and I'm looking forward to your comments. Thank you, and please remember to subscribe. Click that notification bell and subscribe so that you can know when the next lesson uh, will be uploaded onto YouTube. Thank you. Thank you for joining me for Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. We're going to be talking about thankfulness glorifies God. And this is part one. As I continue to talk about discover the keys to staying full of God, we're going to, to be talking about thankfulness glorifies God. Then this is the second key to staying full of God, and that is to be thankful. In Romans 1 and 21, it talks about neither were thankful. So when we think about glorifying God and staying full of Him, we want to be able to ensure that we are being thankful. And that is the second key, according to Romans 1 and 21, to be thankful. And that is how, one of the ways how we stay full of God. In a previous lesson, I gave a definition of what glorify means and magnify means. Glorify means to magnify, magnify means to glorify. But glorify, magnify, and thanking God, they're all interrelated and they're also all intertwined. So when you glorify God, you are magnifying God. And when you're magnifying God, you are glorifying God. And when you're thanking God, you're glorifying and magnifying Him. So all of those are interrelated. And in Psalm 69 and 30, the, uh, the psalmist say, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. So when we are thankful, that thankfulness gives us the ability to allow God to be bigger than our problems. We will see him bigger than our problems. We will be able to know that he is indeed the defender of us that he is our father he is our king he is our savior he is our redeemer he is everything that he said that he would be in our lives and so when we are thankful that means that we are exalting him we are magnifying him for who he is in our lives and we shouldn't be uh, magnify him and thanking him for the things that he give us yes we should say thank you Jesus but it's, that's not the sole reason why we should serve the Lord we should serve the Lord solely for what he has done for us because he first loved us he first loved us because he showed it on Calvary when he sent his son Jesus Christ on Calvary and he shed and he died and he bled so that we can have eternal life, that we can live with Jesus forever and ever. So when we are thankful to God, we are glorifying him. In order to glorify God, you need to be thankful. You know, have you uh, thought about a situation where 
you know, you were complaining or you were disgruntled or you were being negative, you know, about something, was it hard for you to also begin to praise that person or begin to thank that person or be genuinely thankful for that person? Generally, that's not what happens. You know, so the same thing with God. If you're disgruntled against him, if you're negative against him, if you really don't believe in his word and you really don't have a relationship with him and you really don't recognize what he has done for you in your life, it's going to be hard to be thankful. It's, it's going to be hard to be thankful and it's going to be hard to glorify him. But we are reminded that, you know, that it, to glorify God, one of the things we can glorify him is, in is what he has said and what he has done in our lives you know uh in the previous lesson the set uh set joy before you i talked about sharing your testimony sharing what god has done sharing what he has said in your life and how he has brought it has brought it to pass and you know without a shadow of a doubt that only god did this thing for you so why is it so often that christians are ashamed to share what jesus has done uh, in your life? Why is it so hard to be able to witness and tell the goodness of God when he has done so much? I mean, he's, I know for me, he's been better to me than I've been to myself. And he's such a good and merciful God. So in, in thankfulness, we should, that should also extenuate into the fact that we also glorify, glorify him because thankfulness glorifies God. As you think on the Lord this way, meaning as you begin to begin to thank God and begin to glorify God and then have a mindset of doing this every single day, then you will see how God has become bigger and bigger and powerful in your life. That Jesus will be able, that you will see Jesus in a different way. Your mindset will change and you will begin to rest and be assured and trust in what Jesus has said in his word. When you become thankful and you glorify God, then your mindset will be begin to also lean to the fact that no matter what comes your way, no matter what tragedy comes your way, no matter what sickness comes your way, no matter what disease comes your way, you can just rely on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ loves you and I very much. We are the apple of God's eye. What good father won't come in and intervene and help his children? That is Jesus. He will come in and help us. It may not be like we think, but Jesus will always come in and he will always give us the victory. Unthankfulness is one of the blights of our generation. You know, when we talk about memory and, and humility, have you, uh, uh, have you ever had one of your children come to you? You done did all these wonderful things for them. You bought all these Christmas presents, birthday presents, whatever you have, you know, just really given it to them and they've really just been blessed. They have the latest technology, the latest shoes, the latest clothes, the latest brand name clothes. They had their, their room, you know, all hooked up and then they come and they, uh, and then they become ungrateful, you know, or you, or you, you know, fix this meal, this nice meal for them, whether it's your child or your husband, you know, who, whomever, and they get to the table and they start complaining, you know, about some of the smallest details, you know, of what you've done and you have slayed and you have worked in the, uh, in the kitchen, you know, hours and hours at a time. But that's how it is too with God. You know, God can, you know, I know I, at one point, you know, as long as God was giving me, you know, uh, everything that I wanted and everything I've desired, oh man, I was, you know, I was that, you know, I was happy go lucky. But as soon as the little thing didn't go my way, then I began to become disgruntled. But as I've aged and matured in Christ, I have learned to just be thankful, thankful for what he has given me, not look at the Joneses, not look what other people are doing, but just look at what Jesus has said unto me and what he has done for me, what he has done for my family. And remember that even in the darkest hours, there's still silver lining. There is still enough to be, uh, there is still something to give God praise. It may be something tragic happening in your life, but you can still look and see what the, the awesomeness of God. God, if you look hard enough and you especially if you get into the word there'll be enough to give God praise so if you're unthankful on today I just encourage you just to remember remember and be humble and think about what Jesus has said to you and what he has done for you in your life think about the testimonies that he has given you in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 2 and, uh, and verse 4, said, In the last days, perilous times will come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, 
covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And if uh, when I first got saved, I was thinking, you know, last days is years and years and years away. Uh, but as I have come on this journey and have walked with God, I have seen that a lot of this have come to pass, that it is happening now. It be, you know, I've never seen so many uh, children disobedient to their parents. I have seen so much covetousness, proud, proud people, you know, uh, lovers of their own selves. This is happening now. So we are, to me, in my opinion, we are in the last days. Being unthankful is listed in Romans 1 and 21 right next to being unholy. It simply means that, you know, you don't remember or acknowledge the goodness of God. And so when you don't remember the, or acknowledge the goodness of God, that means that one, you are being unthankful. And two, it causes you to minimize who God is in your life. Being thankful involves memory and humility. And why is that? Well, if you don't remember the good things that has been done for you, then it's hard for you to be thankful. So it also takes humility. So it takes someone to be humble enough to acknowledge the goodness that's been done for you. Sometimes people are arrogant and, uh, and not saying thank you or not being grateful or not acknowledging what someone has done uh, for them. But so it takes someone who is who has humility to be able to say thank you for what you've done. And it's the same thing with God. When we go before God, we need to remember what he has done. And then we need to be humble enough to acknowledge what he has done for us. In Psalm 103 and 2, it reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So even the psalmist remind us not to forget his benefits. Because in his word, he said that he will forgive all our iniquities and he will heal all of our diseases. So when we remember to bless God and we begin to just... Uh, uh, to give him honor that's due unto his name, he reminds us to not to forget his benefits. So there are so there are benefits of blessing the Lord. There are benefits in serving the Lord. There are benefits in praising his name. So if you're in a situation, then I encourage you to praise your way out. I would encourage you to be be mindful or of the praise that's due unto the Lord Jesus Christ's name, to magnify him in that situation. Because there are benefits in blessing him and praising him. God commanded us not to forget because he knows that we will if we don't make a decision to remember. So when we are going about our day, we can make a conscious decision to remember, to remember the Lord, to remember in every decision we make, in everything that we do, no matter who, and everywhere we go. We can not forget God because in remembering God, it comes with those benefits. 
He will forgive our iniquities. He will heal our diseases. And there's so much more that um, that the benefits that go along with praising God and magnifying God. But that's not the main reason why we should be um, thanking him. As I said previously, we should be thanking him and praising him for who he is. Thanking him and praising him that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so when God said and commanded us not to forget, then that means that we have um, we have a decision to make to not forget him. You know, some people, they use journals and they write down the victories that God's given them, the testimonies God's given them, to write down the revelation that God's given them. You know, if you need a journal, I do have a journal. It's on Amazon. You know, it'll tell, tell you more in the description be below. You can just click on that link. And they'll direct you directly to that Bible journal. And those proceeds from the Bible journal, it will um, it will go to uh, to help the widows. So uh, there is the link in the video description. But yes, God commanded us not to forget. And just ask yourself, are you, for, you know, are you forgetting God? And then ask yourself, where are you forgetting God? And if you are, just remember, you know, to do a 180. And begin to praise him and thank him for what he has said and what he has done in your life. It was so important to God that the Israelites not forget him that he outlay, outlay it in Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 25 and Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 20. And he instructed, not just instructed, but commanded them not to forget what he has done. So I'm going to read a few scriptures from Deuteronomy the sixth chapter. Um, I'm not going to read all the verses in, in its entirety. So whenever you have chance, go back and read it. Uh, but beginning in verse uh, in chapter six, verse seven, where well, I'm going to start with six. Say in these words, which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign unto thy hand, I mean upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes. And thou shalt write upon them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And this is God instructing, commanding the children of Israel to not forget him, to not forget what he has done. He said, lest when you are um, when you are in the goodly place, goodly place, when you have, you know, when you are uh, uh, been brought out and you in that land which he has brought them to, he said, lest you forget him. Lest you forget what he has done. And then in, in uh, Deuteronomy 8, chapter 1 through 20, and again, I'm not going to read all the verses in its entirety. So I'm going to, um, I am going to read verses 11 in Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. And it reads, uh, where verse 10 says, When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So, um, so it's important that we do not forget the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not forget the Lord and what he has done for us. Because as soon as... You know, the Lord bless you with houses and land and money and prosperity. Um, you know, what the enemy comes in is say, you've done these things by your own hand. You've done this by your connections. You've done this by your power. And and when, when in all actuality, it has been the Lord Jesus Christ that has blessed you. And too often I've seen it where 
uh, uh, Christians have, have, and that have had testimonies of how God has blessed them and how he has took them from being absolutely from poverty and then blessed them to become very wealthy and then as soon as they become wealthy they forget god as soon as they become wealthy they forget about their fellow man as soon as they forget as soon as they become prosperous you know they forget and start looking down on their brothers and sisters in christ but that's not what the lord will have us to do god when he raises us up he raises us up to be a blessing to other others as you know and then there's a lot of prosperity churches and I'm not knocking prosperity, but too often I've seen so many prosperity churches and yet the members in that church are, they're hungry, the single mothers are struggling, you know, there's really no outreach, there's no widows programs, you know, there are just, everything is about the money, 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 but there's really no outreach to their, um, to their congregation. Then there's outreach to external uh, people, you know, or other countries. But very rarely, there's no career, you know, outreach uh, programs for the for their members who have been displaced, you know, and it should be, you know, there should be more resources in the quote unquote unquote prosperity churches than in anywhere. But often, most often not, those are the places where I have the least resources. Um, but God told us to not forget, and when we don't forget, then that means we are remembering God in everything that we do. You know, don't be one where God raises you up, take you from, you know, from poverty and bring you into prosperity. And then you forget God. Do not forget the Lord. Congratulations. You have come to the knowledge check uh, part of this lesson. The next few slides are uh, just going to be a music in the background. Uh, but I pray that you enjoy uh, this section of the Bible study. And let me know in the comments uh, what you think. Congratulations, you have reached the knowledge check portion of the Bible study. I salute you for your dedication and learning more about Christ. You're going to hear music in the background, so there would not be any talking uh, during the quiz. Uh, but the questions are going to be on screen. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section, and I, I will appreciate your feedback.
So you can support uh, the ministry uh, by going to Amazon.com. I'm showing you, you know, where you can go in in the search bar. You can type in uh, Kenos Empowerment. Uh, it will pull up uh, the Bible study journal. Uh, it is available for purchase. You know, the proceeds from this journal is um, is used to support widows. And so, um, so I, you know, I do send out greeting cards, you know, to, uh, you know, to widows or widow, widowers. I talk, I send uh, the uh, cards to people who are sick uh, or homebound. Uh, so this will really be a blessing uh, to those when to the to that outreach um, and you can find it on amazon.com thank you for joining me for this lesson uh, please join me for the next lesson uh, the videos are uploaded on Monday and Wednesdays and I ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you will get notified of new videos and updates. Also go to my website, www.kenosempowerment.com. Get to get your free report from my website, uh, www.kenosempowerment.com. Uh, you can go there to download your free report today. haven't already gotten your discipleship uh, questions the quiz um, please go to uh, the website uh, the link is in the video description below new videos are uploaded every Monday uh, and every Wednesday at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time I do appreciate you taking the time to watch of the my Bible studies and I pray that it they have been a blessing to you please uh, comment in the uh, comments below I would love to hear uh, about your um, your thoughts on the Bible studies and how uh, it's helping you now I want to end in prayer father in Jesus name I just thank and praise you Lord for allowing us just to rethink our priorities in you help us oh God to be able to focus uh, on you in our daily walk, Father, that we'll put you and your word first in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I ask you, O oh God, to bless each and every one under the sound of my voice. Father, God, I ask you, Lord God, just to keep them, keep their families, Lord. And Father, God, I ask you, Lord God, that you will minister to them, that you will show yourself strong in their lives. Father, I praise you and I bless you and I honor you and adore you because you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. And there is none to be compared unto you in heaven, on earth, or underneath the earth help us to glorify you and to magnify your name for father god you say you even magnify your name your um jesus name even above your name so father in the name of jesus we praise you we bless you we honor you and we adore you in jesus name we pray amen